Okay. Um, we will call the uh, meeting to order. We have enough people here, so we have a quorum. We will start with public input. Uh, someone's going to have to tell me, since I don't have a screen, to see if anyone's out there raising their hand and has a question or comment. If you do, please we'll limit your conversation to two minutes uh, and just let us know what you have. Anyone out Wendy there Miss? with a comment? Hi, yes, this is Wendy, Wendy Miss, and um, Mary Deering here in the clerk treasurer's office, uh, and also a resident of Independence Park, had inquired about the status of Circle Park. She has observed uh, nominal work being done. It looks as though the uh, old equipment is just still there, and um, just what's the timetable as it seems to have pretty much ground to a halt. Great question. Uh, what if you have her contact information? We can get back to her as it will contact the person that we've uh, uh, awarded the contract to and see what the situation is. I I don't have an answer unless someone else on this okay. meeting Zoom has one. She's here in the clerk treasurer's office, and that number is eight three six six nine four eight. Kevin, would you happen to have an idea as to um, when that business would be completed? I've been on, been put on hold by the host. Kevin, you're, 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 I think I can hear you now. Thank you. Sure. You? Okay. Anything, Kevin, you got? All right, we'll we'll skip Kevin. Now we'll we'll get an answer to her. She's she's in the municipal building, so I'm sure we can get an answer for her. Very good. Thank you Anybody? very much. I No, you're welcome. Is there anyone else raising their hand that you can tell or? Everyone, seeing none, we'll move on to the claims or the bills. No, the park board minutes. Park board minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. My eyes are going terrible. The, the minutes of the June 2nd, well, that should be 20, 20 minutes. That's fine. Uh, anybody have any corrections or comments dealing with the minutes? No. No. I, I move to approve the minutes. Second. It's been motion by Robin, seconded by Mike, that we approve the minutes of June 2nd. All those in favor say aye. 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 And no anyone opposed, see none, the minutes have passed. Now we'll move on to the voucher register. We have six different items. Any comments, questions, concerns? I did not. Motion to approve. Second. The motion by Mike, to seconded by Robin, that we approve the vouchers as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. No one's opposed, so the vouchers have been approved. Uh, items for discussion. Resolution 2020-02, the surplus bonds fund. Thoughts? I think it would be a great time to have Wendy just summarize. Okay. I'm going to let Tricia summarize. She can explain it much better than I. So each year the park board issues a bond. Um, and as part of that process, uh, our office sends in an amortization schedule to the state, which explains, which states the repayment over the next four years. 
the state then uses that to determine how much money in tax levy we will receive and how much appropriations we will get in order to make those debt payments. About a month ago, we discovered an error in the amortization schedule that was sent to the state. As a result, the debt payments that we were approved to make, the tax levy that we're going to get to make those payments in 2020 is not enough. So in order to have enough money to make those debt payments, what we want to do is declare surplus $12,000 worth of bond proceeds from the 2015 bond issue and use that to make those debt payments. So we're asking you to adopt this resolution, declaring those proceeds surplus. The council will then pass a similar ordinance and then we will be able to make the debt payments. Okay. Any so comments or questions? Uh, yes, this is Mike. Okay. Uh, my question is, and I don't know if anyone is gonna have the answer to this because I believe this was on the 2015 um, there was the, the 39723 the the remaining proceeds from the 2015. What was that, was that or earmarked for anything or was that supposed to be earmarked for anything? Um, those were the remaining funds that weren't used, correct? Yes, and I'm looking that up right now. And then... Hey, can, B, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, you can. We can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I must have had mute on. Sorry. <laughs> I've been talking to myself. And the second part of my question is, is um, and maybe I missed this. What year was the um, amortization incorrect? Was that 2019's amortization? It's the 2019 bond issue. That amortization schedule for the entire repayment period there was a mistake that just flowed through all four years. So it's just this year that we're going to have this issue with making the debt payment. And, and you're saying it's not gonna be a issue for 2021 and 2022? Correct, because we've, we've submitted the corrected one to the state. So for future years, they have the correct information. And an answer to- How, how does something like that happen? Uh, there was some mis a misunderstanding between the bank that purchased the bonds and the town as far as how they prepared that debt repayment schedule. Basically, they presented it in a way that was the exact opposite how every other one has ever been presented. And, and that was for the people that bought the 2019 Yes. Bonds, correct? Or the 2000? Okay. Yes. Um, in answer to this question, what was the funds from the 2015 bond, what were those to be used for? Um, there are right now just over $11,000 set aside for legal expenses, uh, which that normally gets spent at the beginning of the bond to pay for the actual issuance. And it's been sitting there. Uh, and then the balance was actually for Circle Park, so that would be about $900 that would come from that Circle Park budget, but there is still enough money in there to cover the, um, the project that's scheduled right now. Thank you for looking that up. You're welcome. Any other questions about Resolution 2020-02? I'll take a motion to approve that. Uh, I move we approve resolution 2020-2 as presented. I'll, I'll second. second. The motion by Dave, seconded by Mike, that we approve 2020-2. Any discussion? And uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 For those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. 
thank you. We probably should uh, revisit those bond issues to make sure where we where we stand, especially if we can retire some of those if they're outstanding, if they have no other uh, usefulness for them. Uh, this is my thought. Uh, next item is purchase for commercial dishwasher and other equipment. Seems like our dishwasher has gone bad, huh? Well, my question on this one is just that, it, do we have the funds initially set up in the budget to, for this expense? That's my question too. This was in the bond issue. 30,000 was. was budgeted for the, in the 2019 bond. How much? 30,000. It was in the scope of work. Okay, so if 30,000 was budgeted, the total purchase price is 18 and we're under budget, correct? Correct. Awesome. Motion and to we approve. We need extra permission um, to, because we normally don't do down payment for purchases, but in this case, to order the equipment, it's required. So aside from approval of the purchase, we need approval to go ahead and issue 50% um, down payment. Awesome. So moved. Thank you. I'll second it. So move. And seconded by Robin that we agree to purchase the commercial dishwasher and other equipment for Centennial Park. Any further discussion? Seeing none, is there uh, all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Let me get around here. The next item on the agenda is for the uh, Centennial golf mower replacement. Item C. We have a memo here from uh, Dan and Andrew about the quotes of a new bank mower, and it's to mow the green at T Bank. They had an engine failure, and I'm just rereading the memo, but they're asking us to buy a new one. Yeah. Is, is that in our budget already? Not specifically, but per the scope of work, it falls under the equipment purchases, including but not limited to what's in the scope of work. So there's, there is enough surplus funds out of 64400 equipment to go ahead and most likely make the purchase. There's there's about a you know ten thousand dollars or more difference between yeah. the bids and but I as I read the memo you know they say that the two smaller ones are are I I saw the word unsafe and I'm not quite sure I you know I, is Mike here either Kevin or I don't know Andrew I thought actually that Dan Algal was going to sit in um, for any questions or comments about the equipment so. Kevin, I don't know if he could speak up at all. Uh, I think. Yeah. Is, is the other mower not working at all now? I mean, are we without it, one? Can it be? It fixed? appears as though there's an engine failure, which means I, I gotta think that it's not working at all. I believe it blew. The whole engine blew from. So. Kevin or Dan could probably explain this a little bit more uh, eloquently in detail than I could. Uh, but the issue, and to, to your question specifically, the cheaper model, uh, what makes it quote unquote unsafe? Certainly they're not safe on level ground. These are a, 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 this is a bank mower. It's a specific piece of equipment for a specific use. And I think uh, that was spec'd out to meet certain specifications, right? You know, X, Y, and Z. Uh, and what we see with uh, Rangers and Burris, uh, they did not meet that uh, spe the specifications of the request for close. So they, they kind of said, well, here, this is what we got and it's not what we need uh, for the job. So because they are, uh, you could technically call them non-responsive in terms of public bidding, uh, you would say, well, Jacob, here, give us the model that we uh, spec'd out and 
price is $38,312.27. Yeah. Uh, does anybody know when it broke? I mean, how long has it not been cut? That I mean, those kind of things get cut up about every other day at almost, I would think. If, if, if I understand the memo correctly, I, it, it appears within the last seven days that, that something has gone uh, awry with that mower. That if I'm, can, I'm can you hear me? Dan. Yeah. Okay. It, it broke a week ago, a week ago on Thursday. Um, this is a 2008 mower. It was on the list to be replaced this spring. And Greg, when we got to the, that point, said it wasn't on the list. I don't know what happened. But it broke two weeks ago on Thursday. It's a 2008 with high miles on it. Now, you, I couldn't hear very well, but what it is is this is a unique size mower. So those two bids are lower because the closest machine they had to this machine, the 7400, are those machines. If you go to the, the, the competitors, they either have that or they got a machine that's 60,000, which is much bigger, and, and that doesn't suit our purpose. That's why we... We wanted to replace it with pretty much the same machine, the 7400. Um, and you, you, you could put a new engine in it, but it's a, it's a, you know, 13 year old mower, and, and the mo, the motor costs more than the trade-in value by double. So that, that's why we, we would like you to approve the, the 7400 from KW Turf. So if you have any questions, uh, I can try and answer them. Thank you, Dan, for that explanation. Is there any other ex or questions for Dan? No, just I, I just want to, we're clear though that those two lower bids aren't really lower bids. They're just, uh, I mean, they're not within the specs of what we. They, what they we don't want. need the specs. Yeah, they're too small. Yeah. They 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 tend to slide on the hill because they're not heavy enough. Our our, our tea banks, most of our tea banks are, are very. Sleep, uh, steep slope. The greens are uh, not quite as bad, but it's the only machine that could fit it. We're, we, you know, we can make it for a couple of weeks here, but we we need it. The other thing I was supposed to tell you guys: this machine can't be replaced um, until September. They do have a demo with only 50 hours on it. We could get that in two weeks upon approval, and but then we're going to give us a $500 credit on parts. So. I would recommend you go with that. Uh, a, a 50 hours is like a couple of weeks worth of work, so it's it's basically new. So that's, why I can't just we wanted, just buy that one? <laughs> we, 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 I would prefer we just get the the demo one. I, I that's what I would like because we could get that in two weeks. Yeah. Um, it, it, it it's the same guarantees uh, as the new machine, and we could get it back on it. Right now we're. Um, we're in a drought, so grass isn't going too too crazy, but if we get rain, it's going to start going. We have another mower we can catch up on, but it doesn't cut as nice as this. We, this machine goes out pretty much every day, so the sooner we get it back in the in, in the, on the golf course, the, we'll be able to keep the course looking the best. So the one you want to buy is actually the demo, and you're saying that's $500 cheaper. Then what, what's it's the same there? price, but we get a five hundred dollar credit for for parts. So we, we you kind of need that. That's nice because when you buy a new machine, you, you're supposed to do the break in, oil changes, and all that, and that'll probably be five hundred dollars worth of filters anyway. So okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other comments, questions, or a motion? I, I move we um, authorize the purchase of the demo mower that Dan just described. I'll second. It's been moved by Dave and thank you by Mike that we approve the purchase of the demo golf mower. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Oh, sorry. A little quick on the trigger there. Opposed. Ayes have it.
Uh, we will move to item D, gas extraction or well inspection for evaluation because it doesn't seem, the flare doesn't seem to be uh, working just right. Kevin, you, you got something on this? I read your memo. I mean, it just says that you, we need to repair it and then for a long-term maintenance agreement possibly in the future. Is that what you're recommending? I thought I heard Kevin before. Yeah, so the recommendation, just in case. Uh, oh, okay. Dustin, got gotcha. you. Not working. Uh, we're looking for uh, you know, a motion that will allow us to uh, repair the attached Re repair some of the wells uh, and do a diagnostic on how to increase the efficiency of the methane draw. Uh, as the memo from Kevin says, uh, th there is a, a broader scope of work that could be contemplated in the future, but right now we're looking for a pretty narrow scope uh, in order to get that uh, generator moving a little bit more efficiently. So he's looking at us to spend twelve hundred and eighty dollars to to get this thing fixed uh, for the short term. Long term, we should look into a maintenance agreement. Yeah, long term, uh, more in depth conversation will provide more data for you to have a conversation at the board level. But right now, we're looking for a very narrow narrow scope. Anyone have on the board have any questions on this item? Not here. Uh, we'll take a motion if anyone has it. Or not. Um, just, to, just to clarify, it says no action is needed at this time. Yeah. And actually, at the time of the meeting, um, they did get out and do this inspection. So, <laughs> um, um, so after this inspection, that's, the agreement is going to be forthcoming then and probably we'll bring it to the next board meeting. Even better. Okay. Great. Uh, uh, that, that so it is a no oh, action needed. I love it. Uh, we'll go on to an item that we talked about uh, a little bit, or at least told everyone to put on their radar, which is uh, what are we doing with Ale House or the Ale Fest? So Dustin, I'm sure you're, you're eyeballs deep in this stuff. Uh, so yeah, this is for your consideration uh, and discussion really is what we're looking for. Uh, Max Marketing uh, would like to work with us again this year. Uh, one of the issues with the previous contract that had the option to renew was the previous contract uh, paid the, the, the vendor retainer of 4,000 as ticket sales came in. Because the world is upside down, he has not had those same events, which means he does not have uh, the same amount of working capital available to float. So he is requesting the only real material change to the proposed contract is paying him his retainer up front rather than as ticket sales come in. You know, in terms of a contract, that's, you know, if you like the event, it's really not a big deal. Really, the broader question is, for the board in your discussion is, do you want to have it? No. Do you think that we can work with him to have the event uh, safely? And, yeah. I, I personally, when is the specific date? do it, you could have a real successful event because there's a pent-up demand, right? Okay. Uh, but how do you do it? And if you and do you want to is really the question that we're presenting to you. When, when is this specific date? And this is date? supposed to be in October. Yes, it's typically the second weekend of October. Second week of when? October. October. And if things get locked down due to COVID, do we get a refund or is that just money lost? No, I, I, I pushed that issue with him. So like a force majeure event. So say the, the state 
uh, Department of Health or the Lake County Department of Health says, hey, you can't have these events. I said, we, well, we should get our, our retainer back. And he is unwilling to do that. Means, in effect, we don't have the event if that's a thing that we don't agree to, which is a perfectly fine outcome. You know, uh, it's, it's a choice and that's a line in the sand that you've drawn and we can say, okay, fine. You know, we won't have the event period. And that's the way it is. That question was asked and answered and it was just a level of risk that he was not willing to take. We should. So, you know, I don't, I don't personally, if, if you're asking my opinion, I don't think we should. But this is a you as an item of discussion. No, I would want to have a refund if it beyond our control or an assurance of something. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows. I think that's a perfectly reasonable request. Can Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. I for some reason I go to mute. For, I, you know, I'm not doing anything but sitting here, but. I, I agree with Robin. Um, you know, that he doesn't want to take the risk neither do we. I mean, um, and I'm inclined not to have the event at all um, because two months from now, it doesn't matter what the state says, the COVID is still going to be out there. And this event is going to bring a lot of people together. Um, and the social distancing part of it and masks, uh, I don't see happening. Um, so I'm, I'm not even inclined to have it. Okay. My my only statement on it would be I, I think if he would if and this is just me would be is if he would be willing to share some risk in that uh, you know then then we could do with them but I I wouldn't want to be a hundred percent risk taker him not have any say in it or any risk on his side so that would be my only comment for discussion but. If he's willing to think about that, that would be interesting. I, I, I could be persuaded. So in terms of uh, deliverables that you would like to have brought back to you, uh, I'm hearing a spectrum of, I don't think we should have a period and nothing is probably gonna change my mind To There's perhaps uh, a willingness to consider a contract this is canceled uh, due to health reasons uh, by the county or the state, then we should have uh, that computer refunded back. Is, is that a, is, am I understanding correctly? Yeah, because that's the cost to do is doing business, so. I, I would just rather cancel it now. Well, I'm cool with that too. Okay. Yeah, I am too. I mean, you're talking, I didn't hear the date. What was the date, proposed date? It's typically the second uh, weekend in October. Oh, okay. So, what, three months now? I mean, I don't, what's going to change? I don't know. Unfortunately, probably not too much. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, you see what's going on where states are opening up, and I'm not concerned, I mean, criticizing, but I'm just saying that young people just aren't, doing what they're supposed to do. And I mean, I'm up here in Northern Wisconsin and it's business as usual uh, in the bars and every place else. And I just don't, you can tell these young people is until the cows come home and they're just not gonna do it, you know? So I'm, I'm worried well, about I also that, think, I really am. I also think there's a difference in judgment um, in let's say opening the pool, you know, which is a non-alcohol event and usually people can use their best judgment. There's a difference between that and then doing an event like this where alcohol is consumed and your judgment is sort of um, impaired then. Um, and you may not make the best decisions, just best choices for social distancing, for your own safety, for other people's safety. And I just, I, I personally, I just don't feel like it's worth the risk. That's well put. I have clear direction that this is not going to happen. That sounds like a good plan. Hey, 
Anything else further on that one? Can we take a vote on that for Janice? No. I mean, if, if you want to have a motion. vote, I'm just, sure. I think what, we should call vote? for a motion to cancel the event. Uh, I will motion to cancel the 2020 Munster Ale Fest. I'll second. The motion by Mike and second by Dave that we cancel the Ale Fest. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> so three for canceling, one for I'd like to hear more information. That would be a no. The item, next item is Munster Community Pool Discussion, Financials, Attendance, and Hours. Thank you to Jill and Anna and to Abigail for all putting up with me and everything else going on at the Punster Pool with our hours. So she will uh, hopefully report on how things are going and how they're not going and how maybe better to improve things. You've got right. the floor. <laughs> Um, so attendance has been decent. Um, not one day yet have we reached capacity of 200. Um, there has been a ton of feedback from residents that they love that the pool is strictly open to them. Um, but on the whole financial aspect, obviously, we're probably not doing well. Um, so I didn't... I, I thought maybe we can propose to open it up to Indiana residents only. Um, that way it kind of still keeps the Illinois people a little separated from everything. Um, on that note too, we wanted to possibly bring in semi-private and private swim lessons in the morning um, to offer that up to the public. We're not comfortable doing group instruction at this point in time, but we figure if we offer it to semi-private and have siblings do it together or private lessons, um, we can do that along with lap lane rental with Munster Swim Club kind of off to the side and or in the dive well. Are there any questions? Uh, I think Jill, the swim I'm lessons are great. Yeah. Here, here's Here's what, I mean, there's a lot of things in, I mean, and I don't know if you were going to go into the different sessions or not when what you've heard and what Anna's heard as the thing is, and, and we, we still got to hit on the, the swim club because we need to clarify, I think, a position that I think this board had thought was, was the way we were going and it, 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 it proved out to, I guess, our intent and what actually happened weren't the same thing. So you, you also had a recommendation I, and I'm for the swim lesson too, but you also had a recommendation about skipping the two or Anna did skipping the two sessions and just make them one session because you felt as though, or she felt as though she could keep up with the cleaning of the pool in a sanitary and safe manner without the hour break. I mean, I think initially we all thought that it was going to be a rush of people and thankfully, and probably both ways, it, it hasn't turned out that way. So that I talked also to Abby about that this morning. Um, and she said during that break, that's when they deep clean the railings, the lounge chairs, the concession tables, and the restrooms. So, I mean, even if you guys don't want to do in a full 11 to 6, I mean, maybe if we just do a 30-minute time frame, because they can't really clean all that stuff, I would think, properly with the pool still open. But ultimately, that's up to you. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't change the two sessions. We would just leave it. We would we would just leave it at two sessions and not one. She just wants less time, but in between. Anna is interested in just getting rid of that hour time frame in between. And Anna is the pool manager. When I was speaking with Abby this morning, we thought maybe a 30 minute break would be sufficient enough because with the cleaning of the lounge chairs, the concession tables and the restrooms, we don't feel like that could be adequate adequately cleaned if the pool is not closed. Are the, are the, the lounge chairs get, all getting used? For the most part, yes. We have about 170 lounge chairs out, um, but we've only reached that number probably a couple times. So you, you need guidance from us on, on uh, whether we want to do private or semi-private lessons. So 
is there a consensus among the board to do to allow them to do that? I mean, I don't know if we have to take a vote on it or not, but we at least should should say this is what we want to do. Is is everyone in agreement that we could offer now private yeah. or semi private mm -hmm. swim lessons along with from the swim along with the swim clubs when they use it? Yes. I'm for that. I'm okay with that. Yep. Yeah. I am Absolutely. Too. Yeah. All right. So then the next thing is, do we we reduce the session intermission by a half hour so to allow for everything to get wiped down as opposed to the hour? I'm if that's what between you guys are out there all the time. I am not. I drive by. I look, but I I, I don't do it. So if you believe a half hour is sufficient, that's fine with me. It's good with me Anyone too. Anyone else? No, I'm fine with that. Agreed. Yeah, me too. Okay, so now it comes to, and, and this is, and I had talked to Dustin about this, and I had talked to Mike about this as well, is Munster Swim Club want, wanted to use it and had been using it uh, seven days or six days a week, whatever it was, uh, up until June 30th. And, and I had also talked to Ron about this because their pool is under construction. And so I think the thought was back in early June was, when we had this meeting, was that we would allow Munster Swim to, to use it as many days as they wanted till June 30th, assuming that the, the state order would allow for the, the schools to open back up. But what, I, I mean, and I didn't realize this, is that the pool itself wasn't available, Munster Pool wasn't available until Ron believes sometime in mid to late July. So basically, in essence, we've, I don't want to say kicked out, but we limited Munster Swim Club from renting it to, I believe, three days a week. Is that right, Jill? Um, I reached out to a couple other swim clubs and not heard, have heard anything back from anyone that they were interested in it. So I actually told Matt at this point in time, he can continue his schedule as needed. Um, okay. He sent me an email prior to this board meeting um, that they are not looking to be back into the high school facility until August 1. Wow, okay. So um, at this point in time, he is looking to push all of his evening hours into the morning time slots and only do morning for um, every day during the week. And they, they use it when nobody else is there, right? Correct. They, Correct. Some days they start at 6 a.m., some days they start at 7. Okay. So I just want to make sure that it's clear is that so that Munster Swim Club can have it or utilize it all days that are necessary, and they but they have to arrange that through Anna and Jill and everyone else. And then if there's any extra besides what Munster Swim wants, the swim club, then it would be open to the public. Just so everyone's clear and we, we make sure we give everyone the right direction. I I may have screwed that up, so it wouldn't be the first time. Do, do when they um, use it, do we have staff there? Yes, we have a lifeguard on, on duty. Would you like I mean, I know you, you also mentioned or Anna mentioned that just do to open it up to increase uh to Indiana residents only. I mean, I had put back a suggestion, you know, could you do a monthly pass uh, and limit it to like 50 additional monthly pass or, or should we just leave it as where it is? And this is a question to the board. Um, we're seeing the numbers. Do you want to increase it? Are you okay with the numbers as the way they're sitting? Um, I, I don't like the whole Indiana, Illinois thing personally, uh, just because, you know, I, I go to Comiskey Park and, don't fault me for that, but I, I, you know, it's not like it starts to get to be a little bit much. It's you know, it's tricky. Right? I'll, bet, I'll bet every phone call that Don and I get throughout the day about whether or not the pool is open is probably 98% Illinois. Illinois residents. You could tell by the, you know, I know some Indiana folks do have 708, but it, you, you can just tell that they, because by now Munster residents know the pool's open to residents only. So the phone calls are obviously not residents and it's probably one every five or 10 minutes. So just, yeah, food for thought. <laughs> I personally, I, I will tell you, me personally, I'm fine with where it's at. I understand it's 
the, from the revenue side, it ain't the greatest. But I, I, I don't know where you draw the line after after this. And I, I think there's there's ways if you're creative enough to be able to swim in the Munster pool if you're not a resident of Highland and Hammond or Highland and Munster because if you have a friend that's in Highland and Munster they could buy a pass for you and you could use the pass. But not that I'm telling people how to do it, but I mean there's well, things I just don't I just don't want to open this thing up everything. Um, I, I, I agree, sort of, but it, I'm, I, I guess my question is, if, is there a way to open it up further for our own residents? Meaning, are the coupon, because <laughs> a few people have told me that the coupon books um, are, quote unquote, this is not my words, a ripoff. Um, oh, I, I don't know how much that's true, because Can I just you, cut, you cut out. What did you say? Uh, ahead, Mike, Mike. You, you cut out on me. What did you say? Are a what? Yeah. Rip off. Are, are a rip off. Oh, um, rip off. Oh, yeah. So oh. I, I heard that <laughs> this past weekend a lot that it's a rip off. I don't know what that means because, you know, I haven't bought a pass this year, but I've always bought a pass at the beginning of the year and then just use that. So can we go or revisit the, the season pass thing uh, for residents to maybe make ease of use? I, I think maybe that. What do you guys think? Is that Jill and, and, and Janice? Is that, do you think ease of use is an issue? I can understand their frustration because they're only having three hours in the pool at a time. But if you look at fees from previous years, resident rate has always been $7 to get in, which if you do the math, seven times five, that's 35. That's what they're paying for the book. Yeah, well, I think you summarized that better than I did then. So the, the, the frustration is the three hours kicked out and then they got to pay again. It's another coupon. That would be for another. Thought, yeah. yeah, so is there anything that we can do to address that issue? Could let them come well, in the you, same day for, without paying. Yeah, I mean, you could do it that way. You could sample, but still, you're, it's $7. And, and oh, by the way, we have to do all these other extra things that we didn't have to do before. So... I I know seven dollars to one person is not seven dollars to another person, but I I mean I guess if you can stamp them and maybe it'll be less of a ripoff. But I no, I understand what you're saying. I just I guess I'm trying to promote more use for the residents. Oh yeah, what sure. What I mean by I that. agree. Seems like three hours is plenty of time to be in a pool. <laughs> I think there's that small little niche of people who were most likely, you know, a lot of people forfeited their season passes at the beginning of the year. They're like, you know, we've offered them, okay, for a reduced salary, you can go ahead and take the refund. I think we refunded just about all of the at that point. I can't hear you, Janice. Some season passes we had sold. And then you know, because they were like, we just don't think we're going to go that much between the pandemic and then between the reduced hours. But there's a lot of coupon books sold out there. I've already sold four or five today, four. So I don't, yeah, it's kind of hard to put a finger on why, you know, um, I think it's maybe that value that when they would go to the pool on a day like today, you go when it opens and you stay there all day long and you camp out and you eat and you swim until you can't see straight and go home. And yeah, my only thought, other thought on that is that we're not catching the working people. Because normally the pool Monday through Friday would be open until 8 o'clock. So you can't get that after four group that you know, they just won't come for 30, 45 minutes and then, hey, we close at six. So that's, I think, just another reason why numbers might be down. Are we selling food? Yes. Uh. So they placed an order for, we got the okay to go ahead and begin hot food. They've been doing prepackaged items. Um, up until this point, I know that they placed an order to begin doing hot food. I don't think that they've actually been serving that yet because they're still waiting on the order. We've had some private rentals scheduled, a couple over um, between before the holiday and um, 
we had an inquiry this morning and we did schedule we've got about two or three birthday parties on mm -hmm. the book no, that's good so here i guess here's what i would think jill and you can take it back to i mean we could we could probably try to give guidance along the way if, if you guys can think of a way to you know boost attendance without i think most of the board still wants to keep it within the highland munster agreement and if there's another way to increase attendance whether that's through private parties or or whatever we're all for it if you Increasing the time on, in the afternoon since Matt appears to be only working in the morning. Maybe we extend it an hour and maybe that excites some people. I, I don't know. But I mean, I think what I'm hearing is that's where everyone wants to sort of hang out. But if you have some other suggestions, we can sort of give guidance on the fly now that you, you've got about uh, three weeks under everyone's belt as to understanding how this is working. Anyone that if, is that how I, I guess a good recap? I think that's a good recap. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, sure. in these times, I mean, people's just, you know, you got to sacrifice a little bit, you know, I mean, it's, that's just the way it is with everything, you know, um, sorry, but next year, hopefully uh, things will be back to normal. At least the pool's open. They're not very many places where they are open. That is correct. Yeah. Jill, do you have any other questions you, you need or anything else we would be happy to help with? Um, I do not think so. I think I've recovered everything. Okay. Well, thank you very much again for dealing with pools. As Dave said, there's not many that are open. Um, not even splash pads. So we're we're trying to to figure out without causing uh, problems for the community. So I guess just one more thing, actually. Would you sure. be opposed to opening up private rentals to non-residents? It cut out. I didn't hear. So. Would you be opposed to opening up private rentals after hours after closing to non-residents? I don't have a problem. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. As long as as long as it's not you know pushing people who uh, during regular hours out, I'm, that's okay with me. I'd certainly be happy to take money from people who didn't live in town. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, thank you very much, Joe. Once again, um, next item: going for swimming pools, the portable restrooms. <laughs> kind of wondering. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm assuming there's some folks that are interested because of all the baseball practices and just general activity in the parks as to, especially some tennis courts, I'd imagine, as to people wanting to know if uh, restrooms would be available. I'm, I, that's what my guess is. So. It, Janice, did you put this on here, or Kevin, or or maybe Dustin? I think kind of it was a consensus. We've got the phone calls, you know. Um, um, We've taken in a lot of shelter rentals recently. Yes, the doors have opened at Town Hall. Um, between that and then tennis programs and Midwest Wings, they are going to be um, beginning their games here shortly. So it's just, uh, I guess, a hope of ours. Um, that we would be able to put them out at least through, you know, maybe do it on a month to month basis. Um, just to kind of see how things go and then we can create, not create and laminate signs that it's just use at your own risk. So when, when you talk about Midwest Wings, you're talking about Westlake, so you're talking about tennis, it's probably Frank Hammond. Uh, no, the wings are at Beach Park. Oh, sorry. Um, and then tennis is at Bluebird and at um, the high school. And then I talked to the Pop Warner president last week and he inquired about that too, because they will be, be beginning on August 1. Um, so they would be at Frank H2. 
people. We have shelter rentals, White Oak Park, Frank Hammond, community, pretty much everywhere. Right. Well, you know, Lord, what do you got? Think about is all the phone calls that we do get about, you know, the increase you know, trash and garbage and just general traffic in the park too. And that makes you wonder if you're leaving yourself open for sort of, you know, the same thing. Somebody's gonna call and say that porta potty's filthy, you know, there's a million people using it, you know. Um, so it, that's just food for thought, but those are the kind of phone calls we're also getting and emails of just about in general, how much trash and, you know, how, how often do they get cleaned? The porta potties get get cleaned each week. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's that's a long time between cleanings. I can tell you, is it's a uh, this is when it comes to being a man or a woman. This is the one time I'm glad I'm a man because I can't mm -hmm. imagine right. you poor gals having to go in there. Um, is there anything from the state that has guided for the restroom? Uh, any board member have an opinion or a comment? I mean, I guess I I I would be okay with it, but I'd I'd honestly like to see them clean more. Um, a week between cleanings is a long time, and I and that's you know that's it's just uh, it's not a pleasant place to be. They they're at Wicker Park at the golf course, and uh, you know so they are there are communities using them. Yeah, they're at Centennial too, and it's important to make sure that the hand sanitizer is still in there. <laughs> Did you, could you guys, uh, Janice, Joe, Kevin, put together a list of where we had them in the past and, and maybe where we have what the plan is, for instance? I don't necessarily would put one in in Frank Hammond before August 1st because football isn't happening. Um, having lived right by here, I know tennis people play here and they understand what they've got going on. Uh, but I I understand when you're dealing with football practice, August 1st you're going to have with everything's halfway normal. Uh, you're going to have you know probably 75 to 100 kids plus parents at that location. Same way as the wing at Beach Park, where where does it, when do they start? So we don't just have them sitting out there for, first of all, it's an expense and our revenues, mm -hmm. uh, we were probably taking a hit pretty strong on the on the pool and some other areas. So we, you know, we don't want to necessarily just spend as if it's nothing's happening. They're, well, they're always used to be starting games as early as tonight. They're out there aligning fields right now. Who's that? Midwest mm -hmm. Wings? Mm hmm so there, there was there, always there was always one at at beach because that park is fairly close to my house and one of the kids there they were you know soccer and all that stuff there was I know there was at least one. Same thing with White Oak. So are uh, they all gone now? I thought we had a contract in certain areas. We. I think if I recall correctly, when this thing all broke, we never we never put them out again. Wow. We didn't put them out when when it started back in March, and before Greg left, uh, that was uh, something I believe I recall him saying is that they did not exercise that option until we could figure out what was going on. Now that was back in May, so we're almost we're partially through July. So if you guys want to put them out, then Someone make a motion if you want to wait. That's fine. It doesn't matter to me. I I could run home from Frank Hammond to go to my bathroom, but I do not want to invite the public. So, um, tell me what you guys want to do. <laughs> and and the parks are busy. Hey, busy. Could we see what kind of um, sanitation, you know, in light of the pandemic, the yeah, other sanitation the offers a, a different or, you know, what, what their strategy for their services, you know, do they bring a truck out maybe uh, midweek and just even 
spray the whole thing down like we're doing on the pool deck or something with sanitizer or, you know, um, see what that protocol is? That would be a good idea. I'm willing to bet it just, you know, it all just increases the cost, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. We, I mean, and, and we could, once again, this is something that I think we could act on. If you've got Janice, you've got that information that said, hey, look, if they, if they clean it twice a week, what that cost would be. Sure, and then we, we can move on mm -hmm. it. And then, and then I think everyone on the board would agree that, you know, what's depending on what that cost would look like. Yeah, sure. Because we're only talking about how many months more, three three months at the most. Well, yeah. if we're able to get them out July, August, September, the wings and Pop Warner go into October or November. So I mean, really, only a couple mm. parts would be needed for those extra months. Yeah, and I mean, there are certain parks that do receive porta potties that we don't need to put out right now, like Cobblestones normally gets one. West Lakes normally gets one. They don't need them out at those parks because we don't have rentals there. We don't have any structured activities going on. So um, my main concern, I guess, is just leagues and shelter rentals. That makes sense. Yeah, well, especially if they are being used at other places in Munster. I mean, it's kind of hard to say no. Yeah, let's get the cost. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we communicate back by email? That'd be great. Okay, okay is the time talking about bathrooms? We'll go to some positive news, hopefully. Uh, we'll go to Centennial Park. That's not good news either. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, are you there? Hello? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so we are to you. We got a uh, 7,231 rounds through June 30th. That is down from 9,989 in 2019. But that also takes into account the, the month or so that we were closed. So we've really made a strong comeback since uh, since we reopened. Public rounds are at 3,003. I mean, 3,787 rounds. I mean, versus 3,386 in 2019. So you see the public rounds are up from um, the previous year, even though we were closed for a good portion of the spring. Golf revenue is $68,697. You see the big jump, and that's attributed to the, uh, the increase in public rounds. That's up from 2019. We're at $42,412.44. Um, the driving range has been doing very good this year. $31,851. That's just below what we did at the same time last year of $32,126. And that's, that number really is really strong compared to uh, seeing that we were closed for about a month. So that's really uh, done about the same thing we did in 2019 with a month less of time that we were actually open. Total facility revenue this year is $245,486.86. That's down from 586000 over 586000 last year. Uh, my, majority of that is because the banquet hall has been closed. We, are, we, we reopened. And we're starting to have banquets now, but you can see where the big drop off came without being able to have banquets at Centennial, Centennial Park. Uh, the banquet activities have slowly recovered from the closure of COVID-19. The sales office appointments remain strong with online inquiries and phone calls steadily increasing after the governor eased restrictions. 
Interest in Centennial Park remains strong with most scheduled events that were disrupted by COVID-19 postponing to later in 2020 or to push them back to 2021 rather than canceling their events. As I said earlier, the golf course and driving range remains busy every day, allowing it revenue to exceed 2019 levels for the same time despite the course closures in April and part of May. Golf membership total 72 through June 30th, and that's actually we sold another one last week, so we're actually up to 73, and that compares to 76 memberships that were sold in all of 2019, and which is good because we we uh, with the time that we usually have a nice little influx of uh, membership sales in the spring when, when the course was closed, we didn't get those. So we're almost exactly where we were last year with despite the closures. Car fee memberships are at 40, and last year we did a total of 59. And we're just seeing a lot more people this year that are doing a lot of walking. I think that is, you know, during this pandemic, it's a great opportunity to be outside and be able to social distance. And we started our – the golf leagues at Centennial Park have begun. The seniors have been really strong in the league, and they are really enjoying it. They were they were inching it a bit to really get back on the course. And, I mean, the leagues are just packed every time that on the league days they're, they're filled up to capacity. Okay, thank you for that report. Uh, I figured we were going to take the hit on the on the uh, reservations for the hall, but this is good that the uh, golf course is doing well, and I can tell you tar- tee times are tough to come by. Um, yeah. Do you still have to go online to to pay in the book, or is, is, the, is the clubhouse open at all, or the pro shop? Yes. Yeah. The pro shop is open, but we, you know, you can still prepay, and but you can call the pro pro shop and make tea times. But we have opened the pro shop up now. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Johnson. On a side note, I had a few neighbors complaining about uh, the excessive use of water resources for the golf course and Centennial. Uh, these are the people who live around Clayhole Lake. Uh, the lake is just dropping like crazy. And what the problem is, is mosquitoes now, and then the fish are kind of getting stuck in certain little areas, and there's becoming a smell due to the water and stuff. And um, I would like to possibly have a tour of how you uh, gather your water and how you actually use those resources. So sure, and, I, and I've the, got Dan right here, and I'll let him speak on that because he's water. I know we we have to water and save the course during these very hot days, but I'll let Dan speak on that. Yeah, we're we're uh, we've only used two million gallons of water this year. In the past, at this point, we we're normally at uh, six or seven million by the midsummer point here. So. Um, this course was built without a deep well or any other way to replenish the water. So we get what we supplement it with that other lake. So I don't know what you want me to do. I mean, if we don't water, the course is going to die. So Right. I I personally have also been on the course and it's been kind of squishy in certain holes. So like hole number nine more than once. So well, um, we- we had, we had a, a record rainfall the other day. No, this wasn't a rainfall period of time. But, but we're, we're not over watering. We're, we're well below what other courses water. I, I monitor that. So I'll keep an eye on it, but um, this course is built on clay. Nine is a little different, so that will get softer, but most of the course is on clay, so there is no... It, it, it's designed to run off, so it's a hard, hard place to keep looking up. Uh, there is no reserve root zone that Farmer Course would have because this course is built to, if you get an inch of rain, it's supposed to get it off the golf course so it doesn't get into the landfill. So that's why we have to water more than a normal course. So um, yeah. I don't know what tell you about the lake other than I mentioned it in the past that I, 
I don't know if we could get a deep well built to fill the lake, then we wouldn't have to tap into the other lake. So that that's something for to be discussed because this lake is too small for how much we need to water. Uh, there was miscalculation on whoever designed this. So, plus the park waters too. So I mean, you know, we're 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 always in catch up mode. Believe me, I I I would rather be dry too, but. That if if we go to not watering, then we can't mow. That would be the option, and nobody would want to play here. So, hey, well, Rob, you need to consider a, a deep well. your your uh, concern for residents is it's the overall uh, water level they hold. Correct, Dustin. Okay, and from your observation and your neighbor's observation, it is down eighteen inches. Just well, uh, yeah, to where the blue herring is just, just up to its ankles instead of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredibly <laughs> low right now. Um, and the problem is, is uh, the other residents were complaining about there's a smell that's radiating from the mud and everything that's starting to expose. Sure. Anyways, I would like, like I, my request was, is to possibly have a tour set up to where we can explain it and exactly how it's working. You know, there's a lot of water uh, there, and I think that would be a really value-added thing to do. Uh, Robin, if you would, maybe you and I could work on setting that up, because it's not just, of course, there's the... the construction of 45th, there's the development of Centennial, there's the check valves uh, for heart dish. There, it, it's a whole, and I'm happy, I think it's going to be a really good exercise to go through that and, and kind of show that off. So if you would, maybe you and I could work on what would work uh, for the group of what you're interested in. Yes, that would be great. All right, so you and I will touch base. Thank you. Great. Anything um, else uh, of interest at Centennial Park? As a follow-up to Andrew's um, uh, conversation um, with the financial and revenue update, um, I would I would thought um, that he was going to mention that we do have to. Um, uh, is it 24000 and some change, Andrew, that we have to uh, fund, um, which Jill and Kevin are going to have to dig into their budget. And um, I didn't know if you wanted to enlighten the board at all about that. Andrew? Yeah. I can't hear a word. I, I cannot okay. hear one. It's a so, lot of echo. If I could, uh, I don't want to steal this example somewhere, and I honestly rather have him tell this, this badly. Uh, but uh, the way it works is, you know, we're, we're funded on a cash basis, uh, and because we have not had revenue, uh, we don't have. Food. Whoever's typing, maybe uh, uh, either just time out, perhaps, please. Uh, so usually we have the, the, the revenue comes in. Uh, we pay Billy Casper the cost to run it. Uh, there's no revenue coming in, so we have to pay Billy Casper the cost to run it, right? Uh, because we are revenue negative, uh, and it's going to be a little less that we have to pay. Uh, in the past, it's been 30, 35. This month is 24, so that's good news, good-ish news. Uh, but with the revenue situation, what it is, uh, this is money going out that would be otherwise programmed for maintenance or programs. So it, it, there, there is a, it kind of goes back to what uh, the conversation was with the pool. We're doing these things uh, that are, you know, okay. And we're in a very poor revenue situation. So everything is kind of tied together. So I think what 
and the, this 24,000, uh, we're contractually obliged to pay it, uh, and it has to come from somewhere. So it's going to come from somewhere. Uh, and I know that uh, Bill Rehenick and uh, Andrew have a, a, a detailed financials. I've gone over those financials with them. Uh, I think it might be perhaps at the next meeting uh, instructive if, if you're so inclined to go through that very detailed uh, practice to get a, a, a more thorough understanding of how this is funded if you're interested. Yeah, that's so we work. What you're looking at. So we're going to have to go through a li our line items to determine which where we want to take that from because it's the yeah. money that we owe. Yes. Yeah. So that's fine. Then we'll have to make that decision. When does yeah, it? Yeah, it's a need fun? to know thing. Okay. That's fine. Um, any other items dealing with? Uh, we have any issues? Uh, we I know we had one band issue that jumped on stage. Any more issues besides the the band shell that that we need to know about at Centennial that. I know we had people. I know we had people walking outside the stairwell, uh, and I, I think Kevin put signs up or someone put signs up to eliminate that because it was ruining the vegetation. Any other things such as that that we need to know about? I mean, we just we get a lot of calls constantly, like Janice mentioned earlier, just regarding the litter all over Centennial Park. And I know Kevin and his staff are doing the best job that they can to try and keep up with that, but just the amount of attendance that's been within Centennial Park, we receive numerous phone calls about it daily. People don't know how to use a trash can, mm -hmm. people throwing litter right outside their car window when they drive outside yeah. of the park. And so, the obvious, all the Illinois plates, that's a constant, constant. I mean, there's nothing we can do about that because mm -hmm. it's a public park, but I guess just to make you guys aware that, I mean, it's it's non -stop Residents are daily. taking notice and speaking up about it. Well, good thing the Chicago people aren't when I go to the ball games and the parks and the restaurants. And I mean, come on, <laughs> Munsters is a, a gated uh, town for Christ's sake. Anyway, yeah, agreed. I mean, all that I all I would suggest to to let residents know is that you know we we enforce uh, codes as far as uh, you know permits and whatnot, but uh, it is a public park. It, there's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just funny. People wanted to start charging um, out-of-state plates for parking. They think it would be a good <laughs> revenue stream. Mm. <laughs> I wonder if the gas stations and stores and restaurants would be upset about all that, because I'm sure yeah, those people a, don't just go to the park and not yeah. spend their money yeah. here, for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, our businesses are getting revenue from, from people from out of town. And, from the and our, it, It's a... It's a it's just silly. Lancy touches our border. <laughs> you know, you can't go yeah. five feet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we could be the dead horse there. Yeah, you know, just that's just what comes in on a daily basis. It's all good. And that's fine. And that's what and that's what we need to hear. That's fine. And and I yeah. and I, everyone's heard it, so that's that's and, fine. I mean, that's what it's for. Is we need to know, and that's what what's here for. Anyone else have any other? I, I will like say, Dan, if I could just make one comment on top yeah. of what I said, though, I do mm -hmm. think that the whole uh, stage thing, um, I saw comments going on, going around online about, oh, it's free, it's public, it's, and, and I do believe that that is a permitted thing, correct? The, correct. As far as the stage goes? Yeah. Um, that is definitely. correct. I think it's yeah. starting on July 18th, if I'm not mistaken, you can rent the stage so that's yeah so maybe that's a good idea to put that out there like if it yay if you're interested rent it <laughs> you know um mm -hmm. permit uh, that would probably be good go a long way to uh, maybe clarifying yeah, a few more bucks coming in yeah yeah because yeah what was it even for an hour or two you could i believe so yes okay oh, good. how are we doing on that uh search thing dan uh, well, I was going to touch on that. And I'm glad you brought it up. I think uh, in 
and I have now moved on to a, a different, I'm outside of a different meeting, so I don't have my notes in front of me anymore, so I apologize. But we had, what, 16 applicants, Dustin? Uh, and, uh, 18, and uh, the committee of Dan, uh, Councilman Gardner, Council Schoon, and I narrowed it down to six. Within the next uh, two weeks, we will narrow that list of six down to hopefully uh, two or three or more at your discretion, of course, the park board that you would have in-depth uh, interviews with and then uh, you would make a choice. But among those six, okay. I feel very strongly and I can't speak for the other three, but it was my impression that everyone agreed that they all could technically do the job. Now it's just a matter of finding a rightness of fit with the organization. Is that fair, Dan? Yeah, that's fair. And I, and I think for those of you, I think everyone besides Robin have gone through the search when we did for Greg, uh, we, we thought three was really the, the maximum that you really want to sit in and actually pay, you, you can at least devote your attention to. So uh, I think all of them are great candidates uh, and we just have to just, uh, narrow it down to three and then we'll, we'll find a date where we just sit down one afternoon and and uh, find our next uh, director so well that's great I and I appreciate the efforts on everybody who's doing it and you're right the way it worked out for Greg uh, it worked out perfect and I hope none of these guys are from Illinois but uh, anyway <laughs> that's a, that's a joke a right <laughs> <minute. Right. laughs> <laughs> lot of whole thing off or not <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I'm getting stir right. crazy because you're way over your limit. <laughs> with, with all that being said, I'll take a motion to adjourn, and we will we will talk about bathrooms and pool regulations as they come up uh, over the course before the next meeting. I move we adjourn. I'll second. We moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Close. I have it. We'll see you. Thank you, everyone. Don't Thank forget, okay. um, Dan and Mike, I need your signatures. We got about four documents in here.